Hey, welcome everybody. I'm Chris Baer, Vice President of Growth for the U.S. with EXP Realty, and I'm super excited about today's uh, interview with Nathan Abbott. This guy is second to none. I mean, a home run hit. Nathan, I am just so honored uh, to be partnered with you here at EXP and what you bring to the table. And um, like don't that. go anywhere. Everybody watching, you're going to want to hear this. So how you doing, Nathan? Doing great. How are you today? I'm doing fantastic. So we're going to dive into things, but um, I'm just going to start off with something that's just on my mind. Um, Nathan, tell me about this sale that you just uh, recently did, which was the most expensive price point right on your on your coast. Yeah, it was uh, in the history of our coast. It was, uh, you know, through uh, COVID and some of the crazy things that we've seen this year, we're getting a uh, an audience from all over the country and even some international presence has always been the Southeast. Uh, we're in the Florida Panhandle. Uh, they call our area the Emerald Coast. And it's just really been exposed on a national level. And uh, we had a, a friend of mine from college uh, referred me uh, this customer and uh, we started at a $2 million price point. Uh, they referred it to me because they knew I knew the market extremely well. Wasn't really sure where the, the end goal was. So we just asked a lot of questions and, um, now she went from two million to raise the price to five to eight to ten to twelve, and then uh, ended up selecting a home that is by far the most beautiful home I've ever been in. Uh, and they uh, close at fifteen million nine fifty, just under sixteen million. So just at sixteen million dollars. Now there's not many people in their uh, careers um, that sell a, price, a home in that price point. I mean, I know I haven't, I've sold a lot of homes, um, no, never at that price point. So, uh, Nathan, that, that's awesome, man. Um, I got some pictures. Is it okay if I, if I put a couple of these up for people to see sure. this home is gorgeous. I mean, look at that. Wow. Work of art. That's uh, 10, 10 bed, uh, nine bedrooms, just under 10,000 square feet and uh, beautiful gold frontage. It's just uh, really stunning. Sunny look at look at that view. Look at that. That's the ocean in the background there. Is that is that the Gulf? Gulf of Mexico. Gulf. Wow. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. Well, great job. And obviously, people are trusting you with this kind of financial decision. So let's talk about your business uh, a little bit here. And um, I want to ask a question. Um, I always like to hear this. Um, typically, uh, people don't grow up from you know a young age of being a child saying, I want to be a real estate agent, mommy and daddy, right? There's usually some other cause or sometimes a life event that happened, or, or maybe for you it was. Maybe that's what you wanted to do your entire life. So why real estate and how did you get into it? Uh, well, I'm third generation within my family. Uh, it kind of started, I think, at my, my grandfather, I love to do uh, garage sales, and he said when I was uh, very young, I would work that garage sale. I get excited by the people and getting to talk to them about the different products, and I guess that was kind of the beginning. And then um, just watching um, the the good times and the trials and tribulations through uh, the growth of our family's company, um, we just happened to be in an area that was really undiscovered at the time. Um, my father and my uncle became two of the first real estate agents in this area back in the early 70s and uh, just kind of grew from there. I, I've been around it. Uh, it's all I've ever known. And um, it just gave me kind of a sense of uh, a freedom to have some entrepreneurial mindset and uh, connect with a lot of people. And uh, being a vacation destination, you get to experience a lot of different walks of life and, and introducing people to my native home the right way was really important to me. So you're growing up in real estate, I'm assuming you probably had an advantage, you know, over some people that haven't grown up in that environment, but how was it for you starting still? Did, did you have your, your trials? I yeah. mean, how was that ramp up time for you? A lot of people thought, you know, through our family success in real estate, that that was just a, a walk-in for me. Um, after college, I went to be a, complete snowboard bum in Cal Lake Tahoe for two years. And uh, by the time I came back in real estate, I started in 2001. Uh, our family sold the company in 98. So all of our, my father's referrals, they went out to other agents. And then the world of real estate started changing before our eyes from no technology to technology. And uh, being Generation X, I had, uh, had a 
kind of blend the difference. Um, when I first started, there was no technology and then it just changed uh, overnight. My father said he uh, sold the company because he needed one day to have to use a computer. And so um, I had to kind of retrain from, you know, being a native to the area and understanding our area, but you think you know properties until your dad quizzes you on it and realize all the things you thought you knew you really didn't. Um, so the drive was there from a, a work ethic um, and, and definitely an incredible mentor in my life, but the world of real estate is completely foreign than anything that they experienced in their lifetime. Yeah, we've definitely see uh, the industry um, changing, right? right. Um, just like a lot of other industries, um, mostly COVID-19 now, we see people working from home, right? Yeah. More than, than ever. And really the value proposition of an office yeah. has almost, um, you know, dissipated, right? Overnight. Yeah, you so, a lot in real estate and you, you learn from that failure to not do that again and find success the next round. So it's a, I think it's an election of, you know, hitting your head against the wall and kind of figuring it out from there over 19 years you, you go through a lot of different obstacles and different environments to get to where you are today so let's talk about now your success you know mostly here recently named one of the top companies fastest growing i mean that you top half percent i think of your area there so let's talk about that so you've got all this success what does that look like in a day-to-day -day operation yeah, so we um we, uh, I was a husband and wife uh, team uh, for about 12 years of my career. In 2010, we started a team environment. Uh, we had our second child, and um, it has just grown, fortunately, each year. I think a lot of it is just being resilient and not being afraid to jump out there. Uh, we, um, I was with the company for 18 years, uh, named Resort Quest. I was very loyal to them. It was my real estate family, and uh, I went independent in February of this year. Uh, it was a family, it was a dream of mine to relaunch our, our true family brand. Uh, we've always been Nathan Abbott team and I wanted to relaunch Abbott Realty Services. We did that. Uh, last year, uh, we grossed uh, in sales uh, 87 million. Uh, we launched the company in February. I felt like we were in a role to do that. And two weeks later, uh, COVID hits and uh, everything got shut down. Um, I have always learned uh, to be resilient from the oil spill scare that we had. Uh, I was in it from the time that we had the market crash. And I know that you can always find a way in real estate. You just have to adapt what you're doing. And so that we started doing that. We worked harder than we ever have before to uh, make a presence online and, and not, not shut down and uh, take some calculated risks. Um, once the beaches opened in May, uh, we became the, the, the most active I've ever seen in my career here. Uh, we're at um, 140 million uh, this year in being closed deals. Uh, but, you know, to me, uh, we were leveraging a lot, but there was just something missing in that regard. Um, you know, I think with teams, you have two decisions. You can either kind of stay small and intimate or get large. And by getting large, that means more overhead, more liability, more paperwork, and not being able to leverage that with other people. And so I was kind of in a, a lull a little bit. Do I, you know, continue to capture this team environment that I think we're excelling at? Do I continue to, do I look to spread my wings more and how does that look? And, and that's when, um, when EXP, uh, through some people I respected, just started opening that conversation. So let's, let's talk about that then. I mean, you're a guy that's got it going on, right? Most people would love to be in your position um, in your career of what you have going on in real estate. And it seems like everything's just going great. So why would you move? Why would you uproot everything that, that you've built there? You know, this was your dream to be the independent. You're doing phenomenal. And then you just drastically, you know, uproot it and make a shift to EXP. What, what was the cause for that? Well, it was... Um... I think it kind of started, we, we fortunately were awarded this year uh, a member of the Inc. 5000 list as one of the fastest growing companies. Um, and uh, I was really excited by that and, and what we've worked through. But again, I just felt like something was missing. And I felt kind of a, uh, somewhat awkward to find a, a, an agent or a team or a brokerage that uh, I've also respected on an even playing field and to say, you know, hey, I'm a broker now. Why don't you join my brokerage? That was awkward because I felt like I wasn't having an even uh, playing field of conversation. And 
Uh, what I liked about EXP is that it, it gave me three options that I could grow people through. I could bring people on as my team with our typical team splits and the level of attention that we'll provide. I could bring someone on as an independent layer now and because of revenue share and stock and different things that allows you to do that a little easier. But I really love the opportunity that uh, I can connect with other individuals that are already running successful teams and brokerages and show them the alignment that I'm having with EXP. Um, I really like the collaboration. There's a lot of people that I noticed that are already joining EXP that have been a part of my career uh, throughout my career through masterminds and different travels that I've done. And I just started having me scratch my head. Like these are people that I've, I've always tried to surround myself around people doing it bigger and better than I have. Um, I started seeing a lot of those people slowly move to EXP and that's really what started the um, having a little bit more open mind. Is there something that allows me to scale smoother than being the brainchild alone. You know, I think that, you know, I'd rather be a part of something bigger and, and grow my spread in a better way than having to always be the individual mm -hmm. to try to recreate the wheel of something that was already working in a beautiful way of growth. That's awesome. Yeah, and we're so glad you're here, um, Nathan. And and the times that I've gotten to know you through the transition, and um, really your heart for helping other agents. Yeah. That's that's huge because that's that's what we're about here at our culture at EXP is rising tide rises all ships. We're we're here to all level each other up, and um, and you're just a great addition to that. So Nathan, I ask everybody um, on these calls, um, and I'm going to put you on the spot because I didn't tell you I was going to ask you this. Um, can you share one thing um, that maybe you learned or someone else shared with you that helped you get through a difficult time of maybe in your business, maybe there was a time things weren't going right. Maybe there was an obstacle you didn't see how to get over it. But what is something that you can share with everybody that's watching today? If someone's in that place right now, they're not sure how to, to make this real estate thing work. They haven't sold one home or they've sold 10 million this year and they can't get past that. They, they, they don't know how to scale to the next level. Can you share something with us? Yeah, I think it's the understanding that um, if you don't ask for help, you're never going to get the help. And uh, there were times in my career where, uh, you know, what people don't realize if you're leading a team or you're growing to a certain realm that uh, you cry the same tears, you have the stress in a different way. And I think one of the things that really allowed me to have the confidence in growing through some of the spots is let my guard down and talking to the people that I surrounded myself with and say, hey, you know, like I need to be mentally picked up just like I'm trying to do for you. I also need to be called out when you think I should be doing something differently and let's work together, find a different way. And so um, I was, I think just becoming, uh, stop pretending like you know it all because the minute that you think that you do, I think you lose. Um, being, having an open mind to be a sponge around people that you've admired in your business. Fortunately, my broker at the previous company does that. She always um, encouraged me for growth. I've known her most of my life. and. Just people that I've worked with in the industry that um, you're not weak by reaching out saying, man, I'm having a, a tough time in this. Any suggestions or um, and, and to see that collaboration help pull me out of certain areas that I was struggling at makes you realize what how legacy is built. It's not built off of um, how much money you put in the bank. It's built off of how much you positively influence others and making sure you're asking for people to positively influence you as well in, in tough times. Absolutely. I cannot agree more with that. Well, Nathan, thank you so much for being on the show today. Everybody watching, I hope you enjoyed it. And um, stay tuned uh, to our next interview of just an amazing uh, agent or brokerage sharing their stories and their whys. Hope everybody has a happy, happy Thanksgiving, and we'll see you next time. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, Chris. Bye-bye.